it's Robin Riley for Del Bello's Designs. Welcome to my video tutorial. Today I want to show you how I created this Paisley Harvest card. Before we get started though, I want to invite you to our Facebook groups. We have two of them. We have the Del Bello's Design Lounge and that is where we post all of our creations that were made with Lavinia products. The other group, the Del Bello's Design a la Carte page, that is where we post all of the other brands that Patty has in the shop. That means uh, like Sweet Poppy, Cardio, Nellie's. Put all of those creations on this page. And then there's other social media platforms that we are part of, Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. And you can find us there if you simply search hashtag Del Bello's Designs. All right, let's get started with this card and the supplies I used to create it. So the topper itself is on a heavyweight cardstock. The topper measures four and a half inches by five and three quarter inches. The card base itself measures six inches by nine inches and it is scored at the four and a half inch mark. I am using the Sweet Poppy stencil. This is called Pumpkins, SP1356. Look, yes, it's, it's called Pumpkin stencil. I wanted to make sure I was using the right name. And what's nice about these metal stencils is that the number of the product is already etched into the product itself. The stencil that I'm using this is called Featherleaf. It's from Lavinia. The stamp that I'm using in the background, this is the Winter Spice stamp, LAV762. It's called Winter Spice, but I think it's more of a fall or a harvest set of words. Get great words like harvest, beautiful, um, yes, winter spice is in there, nature, hello, autumn. So it's a good combination of those types of words. I will be using an acrylic block to be stamping that in the background. I'm going to be using a lot of sweet poppy tape. You want, this is their low tack tape, which I absolutely love, and you need a a lot of tape because you'll see how I'm going to be using this and you have to make sure that it's low tack because you don't want to tear any of your card. I will be using stencil brushes from Lavinia. I'll use a couple of the larger ones for the large areas and then I'm using the number three, the small ones, for the smaller areas in the stencil itself. I will use a glitter pen just to add a little bit of shine. And all of the inks that I used are VersaFine Claire inks. This is Summertime, Golden Meadow, Shady Lane, and Pinecone. Okay, let's get started. So bringing in my card topper and the stencil together. Now, if you have a magnetic sheet, you can use the magnetic sheet to place your paper and, <clears throat> excuse me, and your card. What I'm going to do is not use that today because not everyone has it. And I think I can show you that it's okay to go without it. So I am simply going to center my card and to do that, I am going to just use the card itself and center it on the back side of the stencil. That doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be close. And once I get it in, what I feel, yeah, naturally I bumped it, right? What I feel is close to the center. I will use Sweet Poppy tape just to hold down two of the sides. I'm just going to place that directly on the card and the stencil itself. Now that will keep my card from moving. Just going to fold this over for a little added security. And there we have it. So what I'm going to do here 
is start to stencil. And I'm going to do the larger area first. This is where you're gonna need a lots of tape. So I'm going to start by cutting small pieces just by hand and taping off the areas where I do not want any of the orange to go. Now, honestly, if a little bit gets over, it's okay, you're really not gonna see it. But I do my best to cover up every single opening where I do not want orange. So I will proceed adding this tape. And you can see I'm just using pretty, you know, rather small pieces, nothing large. And it's just enough to cover the areas that I don't want this brush getting into. Doing this just to be safe. Same thing with that tip. I'm going to cover it just to be safe. All right, I'm going to use that summertime now. And I have a designated brush for color families. So this is for all my orange shades. I simply tap it into the ink, tap off all the excess into the lid, and then I smooth it. That way I get a nice coverage on all the bristles. Now I am going to start very gently tapping the color into the large pumpkin. Now you start with a light coat and slowly build your shades. Now, as you can see on the smaller pumpkin, there is a stem and I do not have that taped off. First of all, it would be pretty difficult to tape off. I'm just going to go in very carefully around that area. If I get a little bit of orange in that stem area, I'm not worried about it because the brown that I'm going to use will cover that up. So keep that in mind. You, it's almost impossible to get all those tiny areas, but you can get pretty close. So I'm trying to keep it lighter here in the center. That's going to create some dimension trying to darken the edges of the pumpkin. So as you can see, it's rather easy to apply the ink. You can go as dark or keep it as light as you want. Again, that's your choice. Now let's get the smaller pumpkin done. Again, just apply a light amount of ink at first and then you go back in and press harder to get those color variations. I'm going to grab my smaller brush. This is the number three brush and I'm going to get in that small area which is behind that stem. This brush is great to use on the edges. Tap that ink in, smooth it out. Again, this is just creating that dimension that pumpkins have. They're definitely not even. All right, as you can see, I got a wee little bit of orange in on that stem. But again, like I said, it's going to be okay because I'll put the brown over the top. All right, let me add a little more dimension to the larger pumpkin. Again, I'm just spreading this gently over, keeping in mind that I want to build by using layers of ink. It's definitely easier to add ink layer by layer than try to remove it. Pretty impossible to remove smoothly. So let me get this just a little bit more. Okay, now that I have that done, 
I am going to jump into the pine cone. Getting my number three brush with the pine cone. Same process. I dab, tap off into my lid, and then I just kind of swirl it on my work surface. I'm gonna go in and just add some of that ink onto the stem. Going to remove this one. I'm just kind of painting this in that area since it's so, so small. I've got to remove a little bit of this tape here to get down to the edge. And actually, you don't have to do that, but that's going to drive me a little insane if I don't get that edge there. Yeah, let me just do that. There we go. Okay, I'm trying to get a little bit of a variation in color. Okay, that will do. Now, since I have the brown out, I'm going to grab that stencil. And this is where it's going to take a little bit of time on your part, because you're going to try to keep each section of the pumpkins a tad bit different. So starting with, I'm going to just start in the center and I'm going to, the center being right here, I'm going to use that small brush and just dab, just stencil by straight up and down into the openings, staying focused on the actual opening that I'm working on. And I'm varying the ink. Some areas it's going to be dark. Some areas it's going to be light. And there you have one section. Now, the next section here, I'm going to go to the left just because. And I'm going to find another section that I like to fit in the pumpkin. Now, being that the pumpkin, like the sections of the pumpkin curl inward, I'm going to try to keep the section of the stencil going the same direction. I think you'll see what I mean here in a second. Very softly and gently, I'm adding the ink from the brush. I didn't even have to re-ink because there's quite a bit of ink on here. So as you can see, the curve of this is going towards the center, and that's going to keep the dimension in line for you. Let me find another section that's curving inward that I can add. And then just place that brown ink over that particular area. Okay, so there, I have another section. Now this time I'm gonna flip it over. I wanna find something a little bit different to add in the top section. Now I'm working on the right and it's gonna curve into the center. So there's that piece. And let me find another piece curving into the center that's a little bit different. Let me see here as I spin this around. Oops, still need a little more room. Uh, that's not doing it for me. Okay, this piece will right here. Okay, adding my ink to that section. So there you have it. Now I'm going to re repeat this process on the small pumpkin.
Okay, there you have the stenciling of the pattern on the pumpkins. Now what we're going to do is continue on and finish the rest of the stencil. I'm going to remove all this tape. And a lot of times you can reuse this tape, so don't throw it away right away. Let's focus on those leaves. So to do so, I need that Shady Lane. And I am going to wipe this up so I don't have a mess. Now one thing that is super nice about using the Sweet Poppy stencils is that they're metal and they don't stain and they're very easy to clean. So when I'm all finished, I'll show you, I'm just gonna simply wipe it off. But right now let's move on to that green area. So I wanna focus on this leaf here and this little bit of a stem. So I'm going to reuse this piece of tape. I'm gonna close off that area so that I don't get any green into it. And I am going to use a combination of brushes here. I'm going to use the larger one. And I'm just going to brush my ink in. I want to I want to vary the shading of this ink. So I'm going to focus a little bit more in one area and then keep the other area lighter. This is just going to create that dimension that we're looking for. And then with the small number three brush, I'm going to come in, get a little ink here, swirl it around, and finish off this little bit of a stem. Again, I want to vary where the ink is. I am going to come in and hit this area just a little bit more with that green to darken the center. Okay, that leaf is done. Now I'm going to focus on this leaf here. I'm going to tape off using the larger brush. Let me move those. I'm going to come in and just brush that in ever so lightly, focusing more in the center and spreading it out. And then once again, I'm going to use that number three brush and really darken like the center of that. Now there's a stem here I wanna get, and I'm just going to block off a little bit of that flower. Just using the ink that's on the brush, I can spread that in that area. Okay, sticking with the green, I'm going to finish off this part of the stem, going to make it darker at the base, lighter at the top. Okay, now we have one more leaf here. See if I can get this to stick one more time for me. Yep, still working. Oh, I need a larger brush. Let me get that going again. Okay, so stippling that in and then spreading it and then coming in with that smaller brush again to darken that center area of the leaf. And I'm going to very carefully without taping off that pumpkin add the green which that worked out well. Now I need to do this larger stem and I'm going to hopefully be able to do this without too much tape. Yeah, that's working. I'm getting around it. Same thing with this. Tape that off and finish this stem. Okay, almost done. All right, I am going to grab another piece of tape here because I'm switching colors. And I'm going to focus on the flower. So to do the flower, the, this one's going to be a little tough because I'm just getting a, a very small piece of it. But that's okay. It's not going to be that tough. You're just not going to see a lot of it this time. 
So using the Golden Meadow and a small number three brush, same process, I'm gonna stipple that in. And I'm going to add a very small amount of the sun, summertime. And I'm just going to do that right in the very center. Okay. Moving down now to the one and only flower on this side. And let me yes, tape off these stems so I don't make a mess. As you can see, this tape is definitely, you can use it more than one time. Okay, I'm gonna start one more time, and I'm going to use the little brush through this for this one, using this great color that's called Golden Meadow. I'm going to add that all over the flower. I'm trying to put a light coat on of this color Just a little concentration heavier in some areas. And then I'll come in with the orange summertime. And I'm going to just dab a little bit of that into the center. And that's going to be it for this stencil. So let me remove all of the tape. And we'll see what this is going to look like. One more piece here. Whoops. And there we have that beautiful pumpkin stenciled perfectly. Now, very quickly, let me show you. When I go to clean these, now, ideally, you just stand up and walk to your sink and toss it in your sink with some water. You can use a little bit of soap if you want. That's not going to hurt anything. But for today's demo, I'm going to show you how I, how I clean it just here at my desk. You see I spritzed it with water. And I'm going to take a microfiber cloth, excuse me, and just mop up that water. Now you have to be careful. There are some areas that have sharp points on them and they can bend. So be super careful as you're going through those areas and just tap it. Once this is pretty cleaned off, what I do is flip it over and wipe off that back. And then I let it air dry before I pack it away. All right, let's get that card back in here. And... Here's what we're going to do. We are going to next take our yellow, I'm going to take my yellow Lavinia brush, and I am going to use this Golden Meadow. I'm just going to lightly add some color around the edge and into the center. Very, very lightly, I am touching my card. Very lightly. I really don't want a heavy coating. And yeah, I'm going over the green just a little bit. I want it to be a little molted, like, you know, not even. I just don't want to see that stark white card. And yes, like I said, I'm going over the leaves and the stems. It's not going to affect their colors that much. Cause so, so now you can see I have this nice light background. It's not that bright, stark white in my face look. All right. Now, using an acrylic block at this point, let me clean up a little bit of my mess here, and this stamp, the Winter Spice stamp, I'm going to use the pine cone. Lightly tapping that ink onto the stamp. I'm 
grab myself a piece of scrap paper here and I'm going to stamp off because I don't want it that dark. And I'm going to just add these words here and there, not pressing real hard, just laying it on gently because I just want that look right there. I am, yes, stamping right over top of the stencil itself. I'm trying not to stamp over the pumpkins though. That is the one area that I'm going to try to avoid. So I have just enough ink to be able to create a little bit of interest here at the base also. So as you saw, with the second, I only stamped ink once, took off, and then I was able to finish the entire, entire card without having to re-ink. So to clean off my stamp, I simply use a microfiber cloth with water, and I wipe off my stamp, and it'll be good to go for the next round. Okay, now we only have a few more steps to go here. I'm going to use the pine cone and my Lavinia brush, my stencil brush here. And I'm going to create that frame around my picture. So to create this frame, I ink up, tap off, and now you see I'm just swirling it on my work surface. I want the ink to be evenly spread. And I'm going to create this faux frame around here, which actually makes your eye center on the middle of the card. So to do so, I always start off my card swirling my brush. I go clockwise and counterclockwise. It really doesn't matter. You do what's comfortable. And very lightly, I'm going to apply the first layer of ink around the edge of the entire card. Like I said, I move clockwise and counterclockwise. To me, it just helps remove a lot of that ink. And I'm barely pressing this into my card. My left hand is helping me rotate my card. That way I can really focus on the edge and where this brown ink is going. All right, let me pick up a little bit more of this ink, coming in very lightly. Now, if you get too much ink on your brush, what it will end up doing is creating a really dark line of ink on the edge. That's why I said you pick up very little ink tap off the excess, and then hit the paper so that you don't get that line. Then you continue to do this round and round and round until you get the shade of brown, or pine cone, I should say, that you want. Again, just starting off of the card, bringing that brown in, and rotating it around my card.
All right, that's finished. As you can see, I focused a lot on the corners and made sure those were the darkest areas of the brown. Now this looks like it has a little red hint to it, which it does, there is a red undertone, but as this dries, it will definitely darken. All right, let me come in here and clean off my work surface and we'll be down to the last two steps. So the last thing we're doing on the topper itself is simply I'm using a clear gel pen, jelly roll pen, and I'm going to add some highlights just in a few areas. I'll do a little bit on each of the flowers. Not a lot. I'm not a big glitter person. Um, maybe you are, so you may want to add a lot more. I'm just adding a wee little bit to give some shine. I'll do the pumpkin also. The stem, I'm just going to run a nice little line down the edge of the stem. Both of them the same way. Just following the contour of the line itself. And then with the pumpkins, I am going to start in the center. Do about half of that. And then on the right side, I will stay to the right side of each bend of the pumpkin section. And then when I move on to the left side, I will focus my highlights on the left side of this pumpkin. Same thing with the larger one. I'm gonna add the center first right side, right side of the sections, and then left side of the section. I'm not being super careful. I'm just adding just little bits here and there. I'm not sure how well the camera is picking that up, but for me, that's just enough shimmer. Now, the last step is to take our card base, scored at four and a half. Remember, this is a six by nine sheet. You can use your fingers to crease it. You can use a bone folder to crease it. You can also use a pen to make a really nice crease. Just use what you have in your stash. Now, using the Designer Dries Clear Adhesive made by Art Glare, I will add a small stream of glue Right on the edge, I stay about an eighth of an inch in side of the card. That way when I press it onto my card base, it doesn't ooze out. Now there's a section that might ooze because I got a little close, so I'll just spread that. And then center this onto the card topper. And there you have it. There's our Paisley print onto the pumpkin. And I think it's a beautiful card that could be used for any time during the fall or Thanksgiving. All the verbiage on the sentiment stamp is perfect for this. So here's the original, which had lots of time to dry. And you can see the difference in the browns. And possibly I could have added more yellow, and that's what created some of that. But either way, I think this is a beautiful card and a nice card to give to friends, to family for the fall season. Thanks so very much for watching. I hope if you give this card a go and make the attempt to make one yourself, you will tag me on the the um, Del Bello's Designs a la carte page because this is Sweet Poppy. You can also place this on the Del Bello's Design Lounge because we did use a Lavinia stamp. So this one can go in both areas. So tag me, like I said, so I can see what you made. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you look at your stencils a little, little bit different and you can think about what other stencils you may have in your stash that you could add to those pumpkins. I think they're just gorgeous. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate always your comments and you taking the time to do so. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.